Welcome to the The Generation Podcast, an audio resource dedicated to a generation of young people who are committed to total surrender to God and total dependence on His power to reach the world with the gospel of Christ. This podcast is designed to strengthen and encourage through a series of Bible-based practical talks. Buried in the 23 verses of Romans chapter 6, Systematic Truth has been unleashing genuine victory for teenagers. Today, Dr. Jim Van Gelderen begins an exciting series on this chapter, melting its life-changing verses into specific steps for the next five weeks. Join him now for part one. Welcome to the The Generation Podcast. This is Jim Van Gelderen, and I am broadcasting from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. Well, we're going to do something on the The Generation podcast that we have never done, and that is we're going to do a series. And uh, what we're going to do a series on is Romans chapter 6. Recently, I was with a pastor, and his son had traveled with me just for a week or two when he was in high school. Since he was homeschooled, he could be flexible. And he came with us, I think, two weeks back in 2007. And uh, the pastor told me something that really encouraged my heart. Uh, He said that during training week, some of the training he received, and I'm sure it could be while he was out as well, was life-changing to his son, and that, that he and his wife both noticed a difference in their son's life. And one of the things that was life-changing was that young man's understanding of Romans chapter number six. And he uh, later on had opportunities of ministry as a counselor at a Christian college, and Romans six was something he turned to to help those young men who were struggling with sin in their life. So we wanna do a series on Romans chapter number six, and it will take several weeks, and uh, each week we'll, we'll kind of recap where we are and then uh, move to the next uh, thought that we need to consider. But Romans chapter 6 has been called the Magna Carta of the Christian life. In other words, it's talking about freedom, but it's talking about freedom from sin. The chapter begins with a verse you may have heard before, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So Romans 6 is all about Uh, that excuse, I I can't help it, I'm continuing in sin. Now, the excuse may change. In other words, shall we continue in sin because I can't say no? Or shall we continue in sin because it's an entrenched habit and I can't get it out of my life? Uh, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Whatever the excuse may be, the excuse may change, but the question is the same. I find myself continuing in sin, and uh, shall I do that? Of course, the, the answer is God forbid. Now, why would God say God forbid? Now, obviously we know that God hates sin, so that's pretty obvious, but there's a reason he gives in verse number two. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now, folks, that's the key. This chapter is all about what you are in Christ. The moment you got saved, you were put into union with Jesus Christ, and that union means something, and it means something significant. Now, the next verse starts with the word know. Verse number six starts with knowing this. Verse number nine begins with knowing that. In other words, the whole idea at the very beginning of Romans chapter six is you need to know something. And it's very important truth that you need to know. So uh, now knowledge is important. It's not everything, but it is important. You can't believe a gospel you don't know. And you can't trust the truth from the Bible you don't know. So knowledge is important, proper knowledge, biblical knowledge. And so in the early part of the chapter, God is dealing with knowledge. So if I could say it, you got to know the right facts. Now, all of us have made decisions that we regretted because uh, we didn't know all the facts and we would have done something different if we had. I remember several years ago hearing hearing a joke that kind of illustrates the importance of knowledge. Uh, There was a a policeman one day was driving down the road and he saw a lady going... um, 22 miles an hour. And of course, uh, the speed limit was like 55. And, and he was concerned because she's going so slow and the speed was, was obviously uh, uh, quite a bit more than that, the speed limit. So he turned on his lights and he pulled her over and uh, he walked up to her. She pulled her window down and, and, uh, and the lady looked out and said, officers, there's something wrong. And the officer said, yes, uh, ma'am. Uh, I said, she, he said, you're going uh, way slower than the speed limit. And I'm afraid it's a hazard. Is there a problem? Well, the lady looked out the window and said, well, no, officer, I'm going the speed limit. 
22 miles an hour, she said a bit proudly. Well, the officer chuckled a little bit and said, ma'am, that, that's not the speed limit. That's the route number. The speed limit is 55. Well, she apologized. She got a little red in the face and apologized to the officer, but I was about to roll her window up and, and thank the officer and go on when the officer said, ma'am, I, I noticed the lady sitting next to you and the ladies in the back seat look white as sheets. I mean, they, they haven't uttered a word the entire time we've talked. They, they looked a little stunned. Is there a problem? And uh, the lady looked uh, out the window uh, to the officer and said, oh no, officer, there's no problem. We just got off of Route 141. Well, obviously, that lady um, didn't have all the facts. The route number was certainly not the speed limit. And sometimes when we don't have all the facts, we make poor decisions. I know it's a humorous story, but it helps us remember that knowledge is important. And uh, it comes so true here in this passage. It says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Now, what does that mean? Well, the word baptized has the idea of immerse. Now, think of a sponge. If you took a sponge and put it in the water, I got a question for you. Is the water in the sponge or the sponge in the water? Well, we all know that they're both true. And so it is when a man gets saved or a woman gets saved, is she in Jesus or is Jesus in her? And the truth is they're both true. There is, a, there is a union that occurs when a man or woman becomes a believer. Jesus is in them, they're in Jesus. Now the Bible says, don't you know this? That when you're immersed in Jesus, so that Jesus is in you, you're in Jesus, that you were also immersed into his death. So I could I put it this way? That his history has become yours. Now all that means, friends, is that when Jesus died, so did you. In a very real sense, you have been put into his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Now, we call that the identification truths. Now, the passage continues and says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism, by this immersion into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now, what that passage is simply saying is when you got saved, you were put into union with Jesus and Jesus was put into union with you. And you became a part of his history, his death, burial, and resurrection. Now that presents two absolutely marvelous and wonderful possibilities. Now next week, we're gonna discuss the, the possibilities that occur because your union with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Now I want you to understand that when you got saved, this became true. You don't make this true by anything you do. The moment you got saved, it becomes a reality in your life. And so uh, as you listen to Romans chapter six, so I guess the, I encourage you to read through it this week and each week read through these verses. We obviously can't deal with every verse, but we're, we're certainly burdened that the first understanding is I'm in union with Jesus. His history has become mine. When he died, I died. When he was resurrected, I was resurrected. And that is a real, reality that occurred at salvation. And so Keep that in mind all week long. Think about the fact you're in union with Jesus. Next week, we're going to talk about the possibilities because that occurred. Well, young person, let me encourage you to stay encouraged about total surrender to Jesus Christ and a total dependence on His grace to live. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the The Generation Podcast. For more faith-inspiring resources and information about joining The Generation, please visit thegeneration.org. That's T-H-E-E generation.org.